It seems everywhere you look these days, the computer is changing things. And that's especially true in movies. In fact, Walt Disney Studios recently created a film that takes place inside an imaginary supercomputer. But it was a real computer that made the movie's amazing effects possible. Tron was one of the first feature-length movies to make extensive use of computer simulation. The advantages of computer simulation are that there are no limitations to the physical objects that are created. For Richard Taylor, visual effects supervisor on Tron, computers are already playing an essential part in creating totally new kinds of special effects. You can make scenes or images that are much more realistic, that have perfect perspective and perfect lighting, uh, that the objects are designed as three-dimensional objects, not as two-dimensional objects. It allows you to see things in ways you've never seen them before. At the cutting edge of modern technology, the supercomputer provides a revolutionary breakthrough in the creation of special effects because of its incredible speed and processing capability. A supercomputer is a computer which operates at very high speeds. In every second, the computer can do 100 million arithmetic operations. At Digital Productions in Los Angeles, electronic animation pioneer John Whitney Jr. is using the special multi-million dollar Cray-1 supercomputer to create the first entirely computer-generated feature-length movie ever. The process Whitney uses is called digital scene simulation, and a lot of people think it's about to make traditional filmmaking techniques obsolete. By using the supercomputer, we can compute enough of those little details of reality, the nuances of lighting and the nuances of surface texture, the reflection, color, and detail, which make up a scene that is so realistic looking that you can't tell me what's wrong with it. The Cray-1 is a million times more powerful than a common home computer. Its central processing unit is made of over 67 miles of interconnecting wires, each of which is only a foot long, allowing it to function at half the speed of light. Using specially designed workstations and huge memory banks, the Cray-1 is able to recreate light and texture with such breathtaking realism that in comparison, other computer animation techniques look like simple pencil sketches. The computer knows where that cursor is anywhere on the surface of this table within a degree of precision of one thousandth of an inch. And when you push one of these buttons and the computer encodes that X, Y, and Z information, you have then created from two-dimensional drawings a three-dimensional data point. In essence, it is like a prop which had been built on a set. But now we have a mathematical description of the scene element stored in the computer. And I give it a name. I can store it away, I can call it up again a year later, or I can call it up the next day. I can pass it along to the technical director, and he starts creating the look of the scene and the action of the scene. These early computer-generated images are only the tip of the iceberg. With a great deal of secrecy, this and other computer labs across the country are coming up with new digital effects of incredible quality, images that may well create a major revolution in visual entertainment. One of the things that we can see happening uh, is the use of computer methods to recreate the likeness of personalities. Uh, we can create new personalities, or we could take personalities that have been popular in the past and bring them to life again. I think there's enough information there to recreate the likeness of Clark Gable or Rita Hayworth, for instance. With the emergence of digital scene simulation, People who create special effects will have to know more than ever how to harness the power of the computer. What do today's special effects wizards think about this complicated new tool? I actually think that maybe computers are going to put the makeup man out of business. Until something really dramatic happens in computer technology, I don't think you're going to be able to get rid of miniatures. The computers are really going to uh, make the initial ideas a lot more direct and get rid of a lot of the, the hardware and very difficult, time-consuming work. And what will the movies themselves look like in a future shaped by a computer? A computer that had enough memory could dream for you. A computer can see tons of stuff at once because you can have a whole lot of cameras out all over, over the city looking at everything you can imagine in every angle, things that you wouldn't dream of. 
From the first jerky pictures created at the turn of the century to the latest pictures conjured by state-of-the-art computers, special effects have come a long way. And so have the tools that make them, from simple photographic processes to complex mechanical, chemical, and electronic technologies. But through it all, the impulse behind special effects has remained the same, the human urge to escape reality in believable ways. And as we've reached out for fantasies we can see and hear somewhere other than in our imaginations, we've seen the stuff that dreams are made of, a blend of science fact and fiction that's just begun to bring us the images of the future.